Hello everyone, Helen Yu here at Jones Farm Intel Campus. We're here for Enterprise Tech Tour today. I have Rohit Batlani here with me. He is the general manager for IBM Cloud. Hello Rohit, so great to see you. It's great to be here, Helen. Thank you for inviting me here. And it's great to be here at Intel, uh, the tech conference. It's been a wonderful day. Yeah, I really enjoyed your talk earlier. So let's talk more about Enterprise AI today. So. Generative AI is such a hot topic. How does IBM's infrastructure support companies in adopting this technologies? How can a hybrid cloud approach uh, make it uh, make it easier for companies to adopt generative AI? That's a great question, Helen. So you know that I mean IBM's strategy from the 2018s has been hybrid cloud mm -hmm. fueled with AI, and we strongly believe that clients who adopt a hybrid cloud by design architecture can fuel their AI initiatives faster. And so we really, as, as I go talk to clients, you know, I run the IBM public cloud, but our sole mission is to make sure that we are accelerating our clients' hybrid cloud journey. Mm -hmm. We're not telling them public cloud's the answer or what's the question. And we're letting them land AI wherever they like. It could be on our cloud, it could be on their on-prem because of sovereignty needs. So we really believe that a hybrid by design approach mm -hmm. where you're designing landing zones helps accelerate the adoption of Gen AI. Well, having that choice is so important, mm -hmm. right? You know, by the way, IBM has such a strong record working with regulated industry, Correct. financial services, healthcare, government. And how can these sectors confidently use AI in the cloud while ensuring security and compliance? That's uh, such a great question. So, you know, from, a, from an IBM cloud perspective over the last five plus years, we've been really focused on building an enterprise cloud platform for the most mission critical workloads for these regulated industries. So we actually co-created uh, with the financial services sector. It's, it's you know, a big legacy and heritage of IBM in that sector. We co-created a cloud platform for that sector. And now what we're finding is it has downstream effects on healthcare or government. Mm -hmm. And what we did is we really built an enterprise cloud platform that was running at a higher governance level that has characteristics that our clients need. Yeah. Those are like the five major characteristics that I think these, these next generation workloads need. It's security, it's compliance, mm -hmm. it's total cost of ownership, it's resiliency, and it's performance. Wow. Right? And so we've really helped clients adopt that for their mission critical workloads. Mm -hmm. And so when they adopt AI, they kind of inherit that platform underneath. Mm -hmm. Well, it's security, compliance, TCO, and performance, performance and, resiliency. and resiliency. Wow, I love that. Right? <laughs> well, I was very excited about the announcement, right, between the collaboration between Intel yeah. and IBM. So tell us a little bit more about the benefit for deploying Gaudi 3 Accelerator on IBM Cloud. Yeah, and thank you for that. Um, so we've we've been on an AI infrastructure mission in in uh, in IBM Cloud for several years, mm -hmm. right? So you know, as as we as a company have focused on hybrid cloud and AI, um, you know, infrastructure plays a very key role in there, right? So you know, we've had other partners and we've accelerated our breadth of offerings to support kind of the the breadth of infrastructure providers. Our data and AI platform is called Watson X. Mm -hmm. It is a platform and it's assistance that leverage this underpinning infrastructure. And what we're finding is as we're reaching scale of clients, cost performance is really important. And that's where in our early testing with Gaudi 3, we see an advantage and which is, and we've been co-creating with Intel and that's what we're going, we have plans to make generally available in the early part mm -hmm. of next year into our MZR fleet. Well, it's great to hear. I've been working with people uh, with uh, Watson, uh, Watson for long, long, many years ago. Yes. So with the rise of generative AI, data privacy and security are paramount, mm -hmm. right? What strategies does IBM employ to ensure that data is protected uh, as customers tap into the new technologies to scale AI? 
That That's actually a really great question, Helen. So, you know, we see the world of, you know, I talked a little bit about hybrid cloud and AI, but what's also happening in the cloud world with things like concentration risk, mm -hmm. where, you know, clients don't want to have concentration on a specific cloud provider, it opens up opportunities for others. And what's happening with regulations around sovereignty, mm -hmm. right? A lot of data protection, privacy laws call, it, it push towards making sure you're running on this higher governance cloud platform that I talked mm -hmm. about. And that kind of fuels into AI. So from an IBM cloud perspective, we've done a lot around making sure that you know we are the highest security provider in the industry. So we use the highest levels of encryption, for instance. Mm -hmm. You know, we provide controls and compliance for local jurisdictions. So if you're in Japan and you follow ISMAP, or you're in Canada and you follow Pro-B or FedRAMP in the US, mm -hmm. right? We make sure that we have those codified into the cloud platform, but we're providing you to the auditability. Mm -hmm. And that gives you confidence that you can run Gen AI workloads on top. So that's kind of the marriage of hybrid cloud and AI coming together to making sure, making sure those five characteristics I talked about are driving value to the end client. That's amazing because as an end user, all I need to focus on is the workflow. Yes. Right? I can leave everything else just because it's all embedded in the system. Yes. Thank you for doing Thank that. Thank you. Well, let's talk about the Gaudi 3 and IBM Watson X, yeah. right? What are the specific benefits can enterprise expect from that? Yeah, look, we are still in our early phases, so we've done a bunch of research testing on early drops of Gaudi 3. We have general availability plans to put it in our MZR fleet in the early part of uh, 2025. Um, and we're gonna adopt Gaudi 3 for both our Red Hat developer portfolio mm -hmm. called REL AI that just yeah. got announced, as well as for our Watson and Data platform. Mm -hmm. And the focus in this first tranche is gonna be around inferencing workloads. Mm -hmm. that, that's where we really believe that Gaudi 3 can shine. Right? We're gonna go after get some joint clients together. And, and we believe that this enterprise Gen AI platform, all the way from Watson X to the Red Hat portfolio to our infrastructure is fine tuned and gives clients cost performance benefits when it comes to inferencing. Love that, I love the name, Rel AI. Yeah. <laughs> it's really cool. So could you elaborate on the cost efficiency aspect of this new offering and how does it help in lowering the total cost of uh, ownership for AI workloads? Yeah, you know, we've actually run some benchmarks. Again, it's, it's early, but we've run some benchmarks in our research around, uh, you know, the cost of inferencing and we mm -hmm. use a metric called uh, you know, dollars per million tokens. Mm -hmm. And and that's where we see a, uh, an advantage with the Gaudi 3 Accelerator, and we believe that'll be passed on and help the end client as they adopt, you know, AI at scale. Wow, oh, I love that, <laughs> yeah. And how does this collaboration align with Intel and IBM's broader strategy for AI and hybrid cloud solutions, right? We, we're from enterprise AI yep. here. Look, we are very focused as a provider, right? As a tech provider, and there's a there's a really strong partnership with Intel and the leadership. We're trying to go after the same segment of clients. I mean, IBM as a provider is focused on hybrid cloud and AI. Mm -hmm. We serve the enterprises. Uh, we serve the regulated industries that we talked about, and, and, and we believe that the joint innovation with Intel, by the way, we're doing work even on the Xeon process, but even on the AI accelerators, helps our end clients get those five characteristics I talked about, yeah. right? And that's what they want. They want resiliency, they want total cost of ownership, and they, they sit on a cloud platform that's secure, that's compliant, and gives them less headaches. Yes, yeah, affordable too, <laughs> right? Affordable, of yeah, course. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I can talk to you for another hour, but you know, here is my last question. Yeah. What are the next steps, right, people should expect from this partnership, and then, for those people who are interested in collaborating with you or Intel, where can I stay updated on the development leading up to the general availability in early 2025? Yeah, thank you, Helen. So look, we're in, the, we're in a co-engineering phase. Like I said, we, you know, we've done early testing with our research team over the next um, you know, few months leading up towards the end of the year. We're gonna be working with the OEM providers that, I, that got announced today and integrate the Gaudi 3 Accelerator into our virtual private cloud, our Gen 2 platform, as well as into our Red Hat OpenShift platform, mm -hmm. and that's how clients can consume it. 
-hmm. right? It'll also be underpinning our what's the next data and our AI platform. Expect general availability around the first quarter. We were still working through the dates. And the way you could be updated is through the IBM Cloud portal, right? Okay. Just go search IBM Cloud. You and, and our product cycles, we go through, you know, early drops, beta, and general availability. And our goal is to make this available across our Americas mm -hmm. and our European fleet in around the first quarter of next year. Well, you inspire me to ask you one more question. Okay. <laughs> what do you think the future holds for enterprise AI, especially hybrid cloud and AI? Are there any new trends or changes business should keep an eye on? Look, I think we're entering a phase, you know, like everyone wants to do something with generative AI, right? What I am seeing with clients is now, especially with what's happening with regulations of identity concentration risk, they're way more focused on the value use cases now, mm -hmm. and they're definitely starting to be way more thoughtful about cost, mm -hmm. right? And so this next phase, and if you look at even our how we go to market with our Watson and Data X data platform, Watson X and Data platform, we're very focused on enterprise use cases. Think digital labor, think mm -hmm. modernization, mm -hmm. think customer success, right? So we're very focused in making sure that this great disruptive technology, we could drive enterprise value to the mm -hmm. end clients. And that's what we want. And that's kind of the next phase. It's exciting. It's wow. exciting. That's profound, right? Value exchange is all it's about. Exactly. Right? Thank you so much, Rohit. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for being here.